welcome to The Conscious Investor. Let's get started. Welcome back, Conscious Investors. I am absolutely thrilled to have um, Bog Burr, <laughs> excuse me, not Bog, those are really great shoes, but let's talk about what we're talking about. Bob Berg joining us this afternoon. And really what is interesting about this conversation is that um, this is really full circle with exactly the concepts that Bob teaches. I had a friend, Michelle Appel, who told me, uh, you know, very specifically, like, Julie, you're such a go-giver. Didn't know what she was talking about. And then come and behold, there's this book, Go-Giver. And now two years later, what, who is joining me on The Conscious Investor, but the author of The Go-Giver. So I just, I know you're going to enjoy this conversation. And really what we're going to go into is, you know, you might not be familiar with these concepts. And so what we are going to dive into is, you know, it's just some of the basics of what is a go-giver and how can you find, where are you in that, in that spectrum and, and how can you grow? And when you grow, it, it will make your entire life flourish. You already know that because you're a conscious investor, but we're going to support you further in that. So let's go ahead. Let's get started. Bob, thank you. I am absolutely elated to have you here on The Conscious Investor. Thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure, Julie. Great to be with you. <laughs> um, the Go-Giver and and then we could just go down the line of books because it's not just a single book and a single concept. But um, anyhow, I would just, you know, most people aren't familiar with the concept. And I know that we don't have like a whole day to have a conversation about this. But if you don't mind, would you just share a little bit? Let's back up a little bit. I'm so excited, but maybe, you know, just a little backstory on you personally. And then let's go ahead and dive in and talk about the go giver. Well, I began in sale, I, or I began in broadcasting rather, first radio and then television. Then I graduated into sales and floundered for a bit until I, I, because I had no background in sales and the company I was with didn't really provide any. And so I finally stumbled into a bookstore looking for something and I, I found there was actually a sales section. Doesn't sound like a big deal now, but this is 40 years ago. And that wasn't something that people knew about unless they already knew about it. So um, it was it was great because I didn't even realize there was such a thing as sales teaching. That's how, you know, uh, <laughs> that's how naive I was about the whole thing. And But I got those books and I studied them. And in no time at all, very quick period of time, a few weeks, my sales began to go through the roof. Here's the thing. I now had a methodology. I now had a system. Uh, what is a system? Well, I, I personally define a system as the process of predictably achieving a goal based on a logical and specific set of how-to principles, the key being predictability. So if you know that by doing A, uh, if it's been proven that by doing A, you'll get the desired result of B, then you know all you need to do is A and continue to do A. Uh, and continue to do A, and eventually you'll get the desired result of, of B. Of course, you teach a system and you show people how to do that, that very same thing. Um, but this was mind-blowing to me. It was just game-changing uh, because now there was a way to do it. And so, um, but the, you know what the best thing about, about this was that I, I soon came to realize that um, studying sales was not just about studying the strategies and the techniques and the, even the principles of sales. It was really about building yourself, growing yourself, right? And I started getting all the books that, you know, back then, and, and even today, I, I hope people read such as Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People, Think and Grow Rich, uh, The Magic of Thinking Big, The Science of Getting Rich, um, As a Man Thinketh, uh, you know, Psycho-Cybernetics, all these, these great, books that build us on the inside so that yep. success can manifest itself on the outside. And, you know, cause it really is a, a whole, it's, it's about our minds and it's about what we believe about ourselves and how we see the world. And, and um, so that was just a, that was a, a great thing for me. And I made a study of it personal development and sales. And years later, after I became sales manager of a company, I started showing others how to do the same thing. And uh, as they used to say on the old Seinfeld show, yada, 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 here we are <laughs> right. talking. 
<laughs> that was such a funny show. <laughs> I can still hear my dad laughing, you know, just because he loved Kramer. That was just such a such a funny show. And those books that you mentioned are just such cornerstone mm. foundational books. I'm currently um I run a, a book club. We're currently reading Who Not How. And the first two that you're to work on is yourself. You're supposed to develop exactly. yourself. And so I mean everything that Bob is saying, I'm like a million percent agree with this. So um, you know, there are, what I love about the go giver philosophy is it is about serving others. And I had a lot of people look at me kind of odd because I was constantly like, well, how can I add value to you? How can I help you? How can I, what, what would support you? How can you, and, and I mean, you know, people are like, what? <laughs> what's up? Um, so let's go ahead. Like, if you don't mind, I know there are, you know, the five laws of, you know, the go giver and sure. why don't we and- Give an overview if you don't let's, mind. Let's let's look at those. Sure, and they they okay. they center around a foundational premise. Okay, which is, and this is you know John and I, John David Mann's my co-author of the series, and really the lead writer, just a great great writer and storyteller, and and the Go Giver. Three of the four books in the series are parables. One is more of an application guide, but so so the basic premise is that shifting your focus, and this is really where it all begins. Shifting your focus from getting to giving. And when we say giving in this context, we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others. Understanding that doing so is not only a more pleasant way of conducting business, it's the most financially profitable way as well. And not for some way out, uh, woo-woo, magical, mystical type of reasons. No, it actually makes very logical, very rational sense. When you're that person, who can move the the focus off of yourself and place it onto serving others, discovering what they need, what they want, what they desire, moving from yourself to to finding out, discovering how you can solve a person's problems and challenges, moving off of yourself and focusing on bringing that other person closer to happiness. Well, you know what? People feel good about you. People want to get to know you. They like you. They trust you. They want to be in relationship with you. They want to do business with you if that's appropriate, you know, based on what they need. But they definitely want to tell others about you to be your personal walking ambassador. So we start from that premise. And there are five laws of what we call stratospheric success. And the laws themselves are the laws of value, compensation, influence, authenticity, and receptivity. And all five of those need to be used together in conjunction, uh, you know, in order to really make this happen. But when you do, Absolutely. You know, it, and so, so if you'd like, we can, we can, you know, go into a, a review of some of those laws if you, if you'd like me to. Yeah, I, I would. And I, I, I could just jump to the last one, but we're not going to, because I think that's the one that most people have mm-hmm. such a difficult time. That's right. Receptiv- receptivity. Very, very um, but, but we don't want to shortchange anybody on this. So we're going to, let's start with, with our first is, is, you know, just the law of adding value. Yeah. So the law of value says your true worth in the business sense, of course, your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. Now that sounds a little counterintuitive, give more in value than I take in payment. Now that does sound like some magical, mystical, nicey, nice kind of thing, but that I'd go bankrupt, right? Give more in value than I take in payment. So we simply have to understand the difference between price and value. Price is a dollar figure. It's a dollar amount. It's finite. It is what it is. Value is the relative worth or desirability of a thing, of something to the end user or beholder. In other words, what is it about this thing, this product, service, concept, idea that brings so much worth to another person, so much value to them that they will willingly exchange their money for it and be glad they did while you make a healthy profit. In the book, we have the story about Ernesto Iafrate, who owns a series of restaurants. Now, these are high-end that we, in the book, we focused on the high-end cafe. If you go in there and eat, it's going to cost you a pretty penny. But you know what? From the moment you get there and they open the door for you and you're greeted by Sal, the maitre d', and he escorts you to the table where the waitstaff's waiting for you, the ambiance is wonderful, the waitstaff knows when to to come over and and when to kind of leave you alone, and the food's delicious and it's presented beautifully and the entire ambiance, and you, you, when 
when you leave and you're 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 escorted out and everybody makes you feel great about yourself well you may have paid x amount of dollars but you received a you know million dollars in value you feel like a million bucks you right feel you know, that way you know yes. you certainly received more value than what you paid while of course mr Iafrate the cost of food, uh, the cost of employees, the cost of keeping the doors open, the lights on, cost a lot less to him than what he charged for the meal. So both of you came, in fact, in any market-based exchange, okay, of what, what we call a free market-based exchange, simply meaning that no one's forced to do business with anyone else, right? Yep. There should always be two profits, the buyer profits and the seller profits, because each of them come away better off afterwards than they were beforehand. But it takes place because the seller is focused not on the money. They're focused on the immense value-based experience they're providing that other person. And this is why John and I say that money is simply an echo of value. Money is an echo of value. It's the thunder, if you will, to values lightning, which means simply that the, the focus must be on the value you're giving, providing another person. The money you receive is simply a, re, a natural result of the value you've provided. That's basically the law of, of value. The law of compensation says your income is determined by how many people you serve and how well you serve them. Uh, this is very easy to understand as an investor, right? Yes. You do, you know, one one transaction or you you have a uh, you know, five apartment buildings and or or you have 15 or 25, I'm assuming they're profitable and you're giving good value, well you're making more money the more you have. I mean, it just that's that's life, okay? So, where law number 1 says to give more in value than you take in payment, law number 2 tells us the more people whose lives we touch or impact mm -hmm. with the exceptional value we provide, the more money will be rewarded. Law number three, the law of influence says your influence is determined by how abundantly you place the other person's interests first. Again, sounds counterproductive at best and maybe even Pollyanna-ish uh, at worst. Yet, yeah, you think about it. And by, and, and by the way, when we say place the other person's interests first, please understand we're not saying you should be anyone's doormat or a martyr or self-sacrificial. Absolutely not at all. It's simply understanding as Joe, the protege in the story, learned from several of the mentors, the golden rule of business, of sales, is that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. And there's no faster, more powerful, or more effective way to elicit those feelings toward you from others than by genuinely moving from that I focus or me focus to that other focus, looking for ways to, as Sam, one of the mentors advised Joe, make your win all about the other person's win. Law number four, the law of authenticity says the most valuable gift you have to offer is yourself. In this part of the story, the mentor, Deborah Davenport, shared a very important lesson. All the skills in the world, she said, the sales skills, the technical skills, the people skills, as important as they all are, and they are all indeed important. They're also all for naught if you don't come at it from your true authentic core. But when you do, when you show up as yourself day after day, week after week, month after month, people feel good about you. They feel comfortable with you. They feel safe with you. And why wouldn't they? They know who they're getting. And as human beings, we have a deep need for that kind of consistency in an inconsistent world. We want to make sense of our world. We want to understand our world. So when you are authentic and you come across as yourself, wow, that just solidifies that trust. Law number five is the law of receptivity, which you wanted to discuss. Thank you. And and, and I kept mis mispronouncing it. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Well, it, it sometimes it's tough to get, and sometimes tough to pronounce. And and it, <laughs> per perfect, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it it simply says this: the key to effective giving is to stay open to receiving. Okay, what does that mean? Simply this: that you breathe out. You also have to breathe in breathe out carbon dioxide, breathe in oxygen. 
Breathe out, which is giving of value. Breathe in, which is receiving. See, giving and receiving are not opposite concepts. However, that's not the message that we're constantly being fed by the world around us. We get anti-prosperity, money is bad, business people are evil, all these horrible, horrible messages we get, whether it's a combination of upbringing, environment, schooling, news media, social media, television, movies, right? Where every script has the, the good people who are poor and happy and honest and the evil people who are rich and mean and the big industrial, right? The whole thing, right? So giving and receiving are not opposite concepts. They're two sides of the very same coin and they work in tandem. It's not, a, it's not, are you a giver or a receiver? No, you're a giver and a receiver. But what you know is that the giving of value, right? The giving part comes first. This is, this is universal law. This is, these are the laws of nature. Uh, we, we plant before we harvest. We sow before we reap. We give before we receive. So when we're able to get past those, those horrible messages from the outside world, right, which, which unfortunately, you know, since we get from the time we're, we're young, it gets not only into our conscious, which would be bad enough, but it gets into our unconscious. And so we don't even know. And because of that, you know, when that reason, when that, that, when we're providing such great value to the marketplace and helping so many people and the money's starting to come to us, if inside, if, if, if our belief system says money is bad, rich people are evil and dishonest and, and our, our value system is honesty and kindness and good, well, what are we going to do? We're, we can't make sense of that, so we push it away. We sabotage our success. So that's why I'm a big believer that we need to make an ongoing study of prosperity. You know, while John and I cover it, you know, in that last, that, that last um, part and can open people's minds to it, it it's not enough. I, really, I, I think it's important to check out great speakers and authors and practitioners of prosperity and read their blogs, read their books, watch their videos. People like Randy Gage and David Nagel and Sharon Lecter and Ellen Rogan and Ken Honda, the late Bob Proctor, and there's others who do such a, a wonderful, wonderful job of teaching these principles. And I think it's important because, again, we get the horrible anti-prosperity messages naturally from everywhere. We've got to seek out the good pro prosperity messages. This is a, a million percent, Bob. And really, when I think of that, um, I mean, I know that's something where I'm always there's a that internal dialogue that is, sure. you know, pull, you know, it just pushing against itself because it's like, oh, you should always be giving, and and you're you're completely spot on. I mean, like you're kind of programmed to say, oh, that's the humble way to live is to always give, but it's actually kind of prideful when you're constantly giving and not willing to receive. Got it. Yeah, it's both. <laughs> It is well. So, for somebody that might be challenged in that area of receiving, what are some things that you found that are helpful? I mean, you've worked with thousands of people. Like, what have you seen has been effective in kind of retraining that thinking? Well, first, it's understanding that it's even an issue. Because remember, for for most, it's unconscious. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that's what they're doing. So when they sabotage you know, their prosperity, however they do it, and people do it in their own individual ways, they just realize they see what happened and, oh, uh, I didn't make as much as I thought I, I would or should or whatever, but they don't know why that is. And again, they don't know the cause, uh, the effect they see. They don't see the, the cause. So the first is congratulations if you understand that it's an issue because, it's, you know, we, we can't improve upon something when we don't understand it in the first place. Okay. So first acknowledge it, that it's an issue. Um, then again, I would, you know, I would uh, get David Nagel's book, uh, The Millions Within. I would look up Randy Gage and, and follow his blog and his, his prosperity TV. Uh, there's a book that I read back in 1986. It was actually written in 1960 called Psycho Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz, which to me, this was the first book I read that, that taught me that it's our, our self-image based on our belief system that determines our results. 
and he goes through, you know, understanding it and then how to reprogram our, ourselves. But it, it begins with acknowledgement. It begins where it's an issue and to start questioning our premises. So when we see ourselves, you know, pushing things away that we would like, we ask ourselves why. What's that based on? What's it really based on? What feelings are, is that bringing up from the, from the past? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it goes back to someone telling you not to be so selfish because you accepted something after you worked really hard for it. Or, you know, I mean, I, I, again, I, I, I don't know. Now, the next thing is, is to build in your small successes. Uh, if you have trouble with receptivity, then think about, you know, when people give you a compliment, do you accept it or do you go, oh, no, no, it, no, it was nothing or something. So if that's something you do, instead, make a point next time to simply say, oh, thank you so much or, oh, thank you. That's very kind and kind of leave it at that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a success. Now build upon it. Somebody, you're, you're at a, a convenience store and you're about to get some coffee and so the other person has the pot in their hand and they start to pour. Do you go, oh, no, no, I'll, I'll just do it myself. Just, oh, thank you. Very kind. Boom. Mm -hmm. um, when somebody offers to buy you dinner, assuming it's appropriate and you want that, right? right. Um, you know, instead of saying, oh, no, no, I got it. And you're trying to just like you said, this, is, this was a tough one for me. This was a yeah. big one for me. I always had to be the guy, who, hey, right? And to, to, to say, oh, wow, thank you. That's very kind of you. Boom. And just accept it and, and be with it and see how it feels. And it can feel difficult. It's okay. But that's another win. Isn't it you know, interesting and, and, to feel oh. those feelings? Sure. When you stop and feel those feelings, it's really fascinating because what you have described, I've, I've done, gone through some of those steps, you know, where it's like you let somebody pay or you let, some, uh, you know, a, receive something from someone. And it's like, ah, oh, this is really awkward. It might be mm -hmm. uncomfortable, but sitting with those feelings and just letting them be and accepting them and receiving uh -huh. them for where they are, yeah. the feelings for what they are. And it's a, it's a, incredible <laughs> yeah and again afterwards kind of check your premises and and ask the question hmm, why did i feel that way what is it that doesn't allow me you know or if you and randy gage again one of my favorite prosperity speakers uh you know he say if you hear let's say you pass by a, a huge mansion okay do you say now take the investor part of you out for a second right. and just just as a, a person you go by a huge mansion what's your thought process are you saying oh i wonder what they had to do to get that right or <laughs> is it hmm, i wonder how many how how what they created that mm -hmm. served hundreds of mm -hmm. thousands of people that allowed them to reap that kind of wealth yeah okay two totally different ways of looking at wealth that going be. into into money mindset is like a whole nother an entirely other topic that I and, and that's why had. I suggested them. Yeah. Yeah. Because that is like <laughs> such a critical element for, for, for all of this is just understanding that relationship. And, and, and you know, what's, what's interesting is the people I mentioned to study, mm -hmm. if you watch them, listen to them, read them, what have you, 1% is how to 99.9%. .9%, no, not can't be 99.9 .9 if it's 1%. 99% is, <laughs> is the mindset. It's getting past those blocks yep. from prosperity. Yeah, that is absolutely amazing. So I want to ask you maybe a more personal question. And that is, which, which of these was the most challenging for you? As you know, I mean, you've done so much growth and personal development. You inspire others and, you know, contribute so significantly, you know, to the world. <laughs> so true. what would... No, 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 I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Did we just say receive? No, 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 no really. I did. No, no, no. You are. No. <laughs> yeah. But I love it. It's like there's a role model. Yeah. A lot of people would do that. And I love the, the receiving part. But what would be the, what was something that was the greatest challenge that you had to overcome? Um, when you just look and look, let's just stick with the, you know, the five laws that we were discussing. Yeah. Um, no, I'd say for me back in the day, it was receptivity, the same for me. And that's why when John and I um, wrote the book and it was out there and we heard from so many people that, you know, laws one through four, they were just easy to grasp. Law number mm -hmm. five was my biggest, right? We right. didn't surprise us because that's pretty much everybody, not everyone, but pretty much everyone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I had to get. At. And it wasn't so much as necessarily about money as it was receiving other 
joys, you know, and other kinds of rewards. And uh, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. so, yeah, I had a, a money thing too, like most people do, but it was really about, you know, being able to kind of receive that and allow that big victory to happen, you know? And, and again, it was, it was when I read Psycho Cybernetics, then again, this is way, this is years and years ago, back in, I think, 1980, maybe, I think I said 87, I think it was 86, I actually first read it. And um, it, it opened up a whole new world for me. You know, I mean, it showed me it, it's my beliefs that were anything that I failed at, that I didn't need to fail at. It was my beliefs. Oh gosh. Yes. Yeah. And there are always those gaps. I always have this vision when I coach people of you have a hose and that hose sometimes gets kinked and it's not flowing well. And when, you know, like books like this, um, you know, books like the go-giver, I think you have, um, cyber psycho psycho cybernetics yeah it's, thank you and that's been re recommended to me a few different times by some people i trust and um so it's great to hear you have that same recommendation and that same wow this really shifted lines for in my life but just really opening up that hose and pulling that kink so the water can you know like we can flow our thoughts our creativity the abundance everything can flow through it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a great point um, I, golly, I just want to talk for another like two hours, but I'm going to honor oh. time because <laughs> that is really important to honor people's time. You know, you have created so many, you, I mean, so many opportunities for people to learn and grow. And I just, you know, let's go ahead and touch on the goal giver community before we wrap things up. Yeah, this is something my business partner, Kathy Tajanel, and I uh, developed a while back, and it's really, really growing. It's simply, you know, we could call it a social media for go-givers, but it's really not social media. It's more business. And it is where business people who want to live life and conduct business the go-giver way come to meet. And, um, and so you can connect with people who are looking to, who are focused on providing value to others and allow themselves to receive really is just a great community of people to connect with and grow your business. It is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Aside from, you know, just enjoying and feasting upon your books, you know, are there other, other reads or resources? If someone wanted to connect with you is the best way to go to a website, what would you say? So I go to, um, so you could do two of them. One is Berg, B-U-R-G dot com. And that has everything there uh, at the gogivercommunity.com. So it's not the gogiver.com, but it's the gogivercommunity.com. Uh, they can also find lots of resources there. But so either one of those two sites um, you can go to and, uh, and connect with me there. That was fantastic. Um, Bob, I just want to thank you for your time. I know that you have a, I mean, you are changing the world, you know, I mean, like you are well, doing things you. that are moving mountains for so many people. And I just want to thank you for that contribution. And thank you. And, and you just, are, and you are as well. And I appreciate the work you're doing. And, you know, I mean, I just think it's wonderful that, that, that what you're doing and what you're giving and the value you're providing to so many, um, is just so outstanding. And I just hope you are receiving it and, uh, and just being great with that. Thank you. You know, I, I get these messages from wonderful conscious investors and I don't know, I don't know if you have a practice like this, but I'll screenshot it or I'll, I'll do something special. And I just tuck it away into a little folder I have so that when those mental dust bunnies oh, yeah. try to come out, I just pull that out and say, no, no, Absolutely. no, it's doing something. And if it does something for one person, it's one person, mm -hmm. then man served done. You know it no. right on. Oh, I love, I love it. how you think. Oh, well, from one go giver to another, you just <laughs> gave a great name for it. <laughs> you know, so, so much more to learn and grow. To you wonderful conscious investors, remember that adventure belongs on the beach, on the trail, on a sailboat. It does not belong in the tender special spots of life, you like investing or your mind. So leave adventure to all the fun spots and make sure that you are feeding your mind so that the adventure is a fun adventure. Feed your mind and feast upon great books.
make sure you head over, go grab your book, yourself a copy of The Go-Giver because more than likely you haven't read it. It is an extremely popular book. It is out there everywhere, but, and yet I still come across people who have not picked up a copy and read it. So please make sure that you go and do that. Go check out The Go-Giver community and see everything that they have available. Until next time, live big, live bigger. If you're embarrassed to answer the question, what are you reading, or you're looking for a community to read with, the five-week book and networking club is for you. The five-week book and networking club helps readers of all kinds grow, learn, and connect with others in a really meaningful way. There's no commitment. Join the group book by book. If you're the person known for not finishing the books you start, or maybe you're a self-proclaimed slow reader or can't decide which book to read next, join us. I provide a reading schedule broken into five simple days of reading with an average of seven pages a day. Reading is such a powerful way to expand your thinking, understanding, and skill base. And reading with the five-week book and networking club will also build your network and affect your business. In 2021, the five-week book and networking club completed eight books and 40 weeks of reading and networking. Head over to julieholly.com to connect so you don't miss out on the next book.